In the painter's mind, it would be his definitive statement about art, about medicine, and about great men of the 1800s. It would be displayed for the world to see at America's first great national celebration, the Centennial, in Philadelphia's Fairmount Park. But it was the blood on the hands that ultimately turned the tide against painter Thomas Aiken's portrait of one of the country's leading surgeons, Dr. Samuel Gross. One critic said, it is a, a picture, picture that, that even strong know. men find it difficult to look at long, if they can look at it at all. And as for people with nerves and stomachs, the scene is so real that they might as well go to a dissecting room and have done with it. Yet today, standing here in Thomas Jefferson University's Aikens Gallery, we know the painter was vindicated. Many art scholars consider the Gross Clinic to be the most significant painting by an American artist. It speaks to the unique experience healthcare professionals will find in the city, with its rich healthcare legacy, with its artistic heritage, and with its leading position in healthcare. The doctor inspires me with perfect confidence in both his skill and attention. I have never seen a medical gentleman who watched the symptoms with such vigilance, listened to his patient with such patience, and showed so much feeling and solicitude respecting him. That was America's first Chief Justice, John Marshall, who would have visited Philip Singh Physic, the father of American surgery and a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania, here at his Philadelphia home on 4th Street, just a few blocks from the Pennsylvania Convention Center. You can walk, as Dr. Physic did, from his home on 4th Street to the Pennsylvania Hospital, America's first hospital. It was founded by Benjamin Franklin and Dr. Thomas Bond, and it still is a center for health care. Inside, you'll find a grand historical medical library, a collection of nursing memorabilia that is one of the finest in the world, and Benjamin West's painting of Christ healing the sick. For the patient, it must have been a terrifying experience to be brought into the hospital's operating amphitheater, which might be filled with almost 300 onlookers. You can almost feel the ghost of Physic, of Gross, and other famous physicians in the surgical amphitheater which takes advantage of natural light. Here, surgeons operated in the days before anesthesia. They offered their patients a choice of a dose of opium, or a conk on the head with a mallet, or as they said, plentiful drink, in hope that their patients would soon lapse into unconsciousness. A strong tradition of teaching has propelled Philadelphia into the forefront of healthcare education. That's why one in every five doctors in the United States graduates from a Philadelphia medical school or postgraduate medical education program. One in every five. Because America's history is so closely intertwined with Philadelphia's history, you'll find much to discover about healthcare at historic sites such as Mother Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church founded by Richard Allen, a heroic volunteer during the yellow fever epidemic in 1793. Indeed, I don't know what the people would do if it was not for the Negroes, as they are the principal nurses. So wrote law clerk Isaac Heston, commenting on the work of free African Americans during the epidemic. You can also see Independence Hall, where many medical lectures were held and where Dr. Benjamin Rush signed the Declaration of Independence. There are many very specific and unique medical sites. The College of Physicians is home to the Muter Museum, the nation's finest medical museum, as well as an historic library, medicinal plant garden, education center, and special exhibits on health issues of the day. The College of Podiatric Medicine is known for its shoe museum, and the Temple School of Dentistry boasts of its dental museum. Philadelphia is a wonderful place to walk for health and for pleasure. Beyond a vigorous stroll through medical history in one of America's most walkable cities, you'll find the city's arts and culture invigorating. There's the Avenue of the Arts with the world-renowned Philadelphia Orchestra, the Philadelphia Museum of Art with its American, Impressionist, and 20th Century collections, the Rodin Museum, and the Barnes Foundation with its fabulous Impressionist art collection founded by a University of Pennsylvania Medical School graduate, Dr. Albert C. Barnes. You put a face and a heart to the city of Philadelphia that made it feel like we were coming home when we came for our meeting. Healthcare represents one-third of all conventions and meetings at the Pennsylvania Convention Center, 
which is the most majestic of its kind. Within a few blocks of the center are restaurants, shops, historic and cultural attractions. Within a few miles are more than 70 manufacturers of biotechnical equipment, 60 biomedical research institutions, and the largest percentage of physicians engaged in research of any metropolitan area. Within 100 miles is one of the largest concentrations of healthcare resources in the nation. And within a day's drive of the city is 40% of the nation's population, which will drive record attendance at your convention or trade show. I was 24 when I came to Philadelphia for my internship. I surprised myself at how quickly I felt at home here. I took a local commuter train out to dinner in the suburbs one night, and I approached that train like I would a New York subway, aggressively pushing my shoulder forward. People on the platform stood by and said, after you, sir, I could hardly believe the grace of the people in this town. And that, plus the beautiful Pennsylvania countryside and the great surgery I saw here, kept me in Philadelphia for 40 years until Mr. Reagan called me to Washington. The birthplace of American medicine, the city where more medical history has been made than any other in the nation, holds many memories for me. It was home to my medical career as a pediatric surgeon here at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, the nation's first. Years after I moved to Washington, people would ask where home was, and I'd forget and say, Philadelphia. And I still do.